Divine Truth. Name of this presentation is Donations and Divine Truth, and it is part of the Lessons in Love series. It was presented in Wilsdale, Queensland, Australia, on the 21st of November, 2012. Okay, welcome everyone today. Today, I'm, we're actually not going to talk about the book. <laughs> That's because we're not going to continue book group anymore. Yeah. Just because the, um, the level of donations is not sufficient to support us doing it any longer. So, um, I wanted to let you know, in person, <laughs> it felt like the right thing to do. And also, given that the spirit of book group has been, uh, from my behalf, giving you guys the opportunity to reflect and discover lessons in love as Fred is walking through them, I thought perhaps we could spend some time today reflecting on what's led me to this decision. And uh, look, we've all got heaps of money stuff, hey? <laughs> so let's talk about it. I actually feel the issue is not so much about money as other issues. And... Um, I sat down to write out what I would like to bring up today, this morning, and I, five pages later, I was uh, thought, okay, <laughs> I think we need to get together. Um, yeah, so I could have told you on the internet, but I just felt it was a, it would be more valuable learning for all of us to just get together and talk about it. So, but since we're not talking about the book, I need to tell you that up front and there's no obligation for you guys to stay if you don't want to hang around and talk about... Um, well, I'm really going to be really specific with you guys. I'm going to talk about uh, why, why I've come to this decision, what I feel is going on for me, what I need to look at, but also uh, what I feel um, is happening amongst you guys and not all of you guys, just some of you guys and different things that I'm going to talk about might apply to some of you and not to others. And this is where I feel like if you can employ self-reflection as I'm talking about the various issues involved, you'll get more from this discussion. I'm also talking to the many people who watch us on the internet because obviously this audience, when I was preparing to talk about this, I went back and looked at how many people have watched the book group sessions and there's quite a number. Um, I think the last one, 112 people had watched. So there's obviously people out there who are watching as well that I don't know even um, but I'm going to talk about the issues involved in how, what is put into bringing this book group to you and some of the feelings that I feel coming back, perhaps, or some of the attitudes that I feel are around not just book group but around AJ and myself at this time. So, um, still keen to bite it off? <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, first up, I wanted to say, though, I'm okay with this decision. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it. I feel God's beautiful law of attraction has brought me a situation where I've had to look really ethically at what I'm doing, what I'm expecting of people around me to help bring this to you and the fact that I can't sustain it. And I have to, I have to listen to that law of attraction and honour that because it's going to lead me into further emotions and further growth. So... Please don't feel that what I'm about to discuss with you is in any way... Well, actually, feel it if you like. <laughs> but uh, my motivation is not to make you feel guilty, not to manipulate you. And I'm going to speak about money. I'm going to speak about what money we've received. I'm going to tell you, AJ, and my financial status for the past financial year. I'm going to tell you, be very transparent... But I really feel that all of our money issues have really nothing to do with money. <laughs> They're about deeper things. And so I would like to invite you, if you would like to join me, to explore that together. What is our stuff about money? Because I feel that a lot of us are at a point where we're going, huh, I'm going to have to look at the fact that I've got stuff about money. So um, that's, that's my desire. Because I've written so much and I don't want to miss it out, I'm going to look at my sheet here and here and there. First thing I wanted to do was thank all of you who have contributed to in donations 
to this book group because you've allowed it to go on as long as it has and you've actually enabled it to happen for people across the world. People have been able to tune in and watch it. I think um, Peter and Angela, you've been following along from England, haven't you, from the beginning? Yeah. So um, it's really valuable what you've done there by giving donations. Also, there are some of you who are incredibly present during these two hours when we discuss things. And that is such a gift to everyone, I feel, to yourself, to me, but also to people who watch. So I wanted to thank you also for that, for those of you who stay really present and engaged with the material, because really I feel you're really engaged with your own growth. And uh, that's, that's a beautiful thing for me as the leader to experience because that's my desire to create a space where you have that opportunity. Yeah, I'm just going to have a drink of water. Okay, so now this is the part where I'm just going to talk about the facts. The facts of what it takes to bring you a book group the facts of what we receive in. And I just want to be transparent. As I said, it's not about saying what should happen or how much we should get, but it's just saying about what is really happening and how I feel this gift is being valued. So, let's look at what is given every time we have a book group. What is given every time you have a book group? Jen? All the things that go on behind the scene, including your preparation, um, Lena and Igor's willingness to come and... Um, Set up. ...tape, film. Yep. Um, the organisation of all of the venue, the yep. money that goes into buying the venue... Um, all the cleaning up afterwards, all of those logistical type yep. things, but all the emotional... Um well, let's start with them because that's good. I, I would like to detail some of them. So there's a lot of organising and preparation. And both AJ and I are really concerned whenever we do anything that there is a venue that is really comfortable for everyone. We never want to have a, a venue where people feel discomfort. Or, so we're always looking at, is it adequately cooled or heated? Are, are people going to be okay in the chairs? Joy and her events team do a lot to also ensure your comfort during each of these sessions. So there's the venue. There's also the sound system, which ensures that you can all hear each other well and you can hear me. And, you, and the recordings are there in a really clear way. Now, that sound system, as if you remember the first talks that AJ ever gave, it was pretty uh, crappy, wasn't it? <laughs> it was crappy even in the audience. You go, oh, what is she saying? I can't hear what that person's saying, you know. And there was a lot of frustration about that. So we've spent a lot of the donations that we've received on creating a very... Um, like a very top class kind of a sound system. It's not the top of the range by any means, but it is one that works and is reliable. And AJ's taken a lot of, um, he's put a lot of effort into that because he feels, what's the point in speaking to you if you can't hear us and if you can't hear each other? Yeah. There's also beautiful lighting. And even though it's taken me a while to adjust to this uh, <laughs> stage lighting that we now have, that is also ensuring that you can see me well. And also when you go back and watch something on a clip, it's very easy to see what's happening, everyone's expression, all of those things. There is also, as Jen pointed out, all the organising that goes in beforehand. So I do a lot of preparation work. Um, Joy is often involved in liaising around venues and stuff. AJ and I are managing those bookings and paying for those bookings and things. What else is there? So what other things do we then have when we're in book group? Over here. Mary, just speaking for myself, the higher perspective. I could read that book three times and only get 5% of the truths. And so I've just been blown away by your perspective and the perspective 
of other people who understand it more deeply than I do and it's been incredibly moving and valuable. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I, I agree. There's the detailed discussion that we have, isn't there, and the perspectives. And it's not just from me always, is it? Often someone else will see something that you think, oh, wow, yeah, I can really see that or feel that. What else do you have the opportunity for in book group? Monique? Um, I feel that you've really helped us or helped myself um, be really reflective and you ask really hard questions <laughs> that... Um, that I haven't wanted to ask myself, and um, and I know you. I don't know if it's up there, but also that the amount of hard work and time you put into it. And I know, I think Jen just um, said that a bit, but but that's a really big deal. Like even when I go onto the website, you've got questions already for us. Like you've really thought about things, and um, and I I don't feel like. Um, I'm really grateful for that and I don't – I feel really sad because somehow, like, I've got money issues, like, oh, big money issues, hey. But in my heart, like, I feel so much gratitude to you both that, that, and so much love. So I, I – Yeah, I understand, Mon. Yeah. And thank you – like, guys, I know that a lot of you guys really appreciate what happens but there are things that I feel a lot of us are skipping over which is we you know some of us give lip service to gratitude but our actions don't follow or and some of us actually have I, I want to talk later some of us have a lot of anger actually about hearing truth and so it's pretty hard to maintain a sense of gratitude when you actually don't want to hear what's being spoken about and I see that happen a lot but also I know that Many of us are just afraid about money issues, which is why I thought, hey, let's just bust it wide open today and just really talk about it because um, it, I, it's not really... I, I, I understand and, you know, it's my desire to continue teaching divine truth, but I, we have to look at what the law of attraction is showing us. If we can't afford to... There's no way we want to go on unemployment benefits, so we're going to have to get a job, you know. So, and that's obvious that, you know, we've got issues to work through, but I feel like a lot of us, because we're sitting on these issues, it stagnates a lot of things in our life, and it also stagnates how many new people come to Divine Truth, because we're a group of people just sitting on a bunch of issues. It doesn't feel dynamic for the souls of other people. They don't feel drawn, because... You know, we, it's sort of comfy, isn't it? We've got a local little group here. We get together once a week and, you know, it's lovely. But is this our vision for divine truth? It's not my vision for divine truth. I'm not saying I'm through all of the issues around that, but <laughs> I do have a broader vision. I would love for everyone to know God and have a, a relationship with God. So... Um, you know, I feel like we just need to, to talk about what's really happening. And many of us, remember last week I talked about awareness. And I said the only thing that AJ and I can really bring you is intellectual awareness and hopefully some emotional awareness. And then it's up to you guys what you do with that. Today, I feel like I'm giving you just some awareness, you know, to, to look at what's really going on. Um, because many of us, we get into a bit of a rut and almost an expectation builds that this is going to be like this and we'll just be served and we forget to really notice the gift even that's being given. So that's why I'm being quite specific. Yep. Mary, um, AJ said about a, a friend of mine that she hadn't accepted the gifts that she'd been given and that's been playing through my mind a lot the last few weeks. Yeah. That I am in resistance, I'm not accepting the gifts. And so yeah. I see your point in this. Yeah. I was really surprised when I talked about charity with the group, how few of you sort of had really examples of the charity that is being displayed to you in your life. I, because I see it everywhere, uh, in my, not only in my life, but I was looking at some of you and going, hang on, I, I could see your partner's pretty charitable with you. Or I could see, you know, and nobody was really receiving the gifts. You know, they're not... 
seeing and feeling what's actually coming into their life. So, yeah. Okay, let's keep going. Book group gives us detailed discussion of what is quite a complex book, really, when you get down to it, isn't it? Um, perspective. What else? This, this idea of the questions, isn't it? It gives us the opportunity to reflect. And you also have the opportunity to bring those reflections here and have feedback, don't you? And like I said, sometimes I feel like some of you are pretty challenged by this. My challenge for you to reflect. You've heard all this divine truth, now what does it mean in your life? And sometimes I feel, remember a few weeks ago I talked about this feeling I feel coming from people sometimes of like, huh, I'm just angry about this love thing. It means we don't get looked after when we're old and we're just, you know, it, there's this. And that to me shows that we haven't understood love. <laughs> but also that we're, we're so angry about the fact that everything we thought we believed isn't true or is, isn't completely correct, that we haven't even grieved that to get to relishing the beautiful, the beautiful qualities of truth because we're still stuck in this rebellion against it. Who has that feeling? Like, oh, I know what's right, but uh, do you hate it? <laughs> yeah, quite a lot of us have that feeling. Yeah, which shows we haven't really come to this point of really loving truth. And trust me, when you love truth, it, that speeds up everything. <laughs> Otherwise, you're always having to get over this hurdle of resistance. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's what happens during book group. What happens after book group? Deirdre? Uh, well, for me personally, it's always more reflection because <laughs> uh, I just come with the expectation. Well, I, I know I'm not going to get everything and I can only see it from my perspective. All That's all I can do. Yeah. And then I go, wow. <laughs> and uh, then, I, then it raises even more questions. So just the one question I ask then raises ten more. So yes. it's like a... So it continues for you. And what other things are provided for you so that you can continue to reflect? There's a sound recording, there's a video recording, isn't there? So what has to happen for that to occur? Does anyone know? And? Um, I do not know the technical details, but I know it involves a lot of uh, Igor and Lena's work. You know, yes. Mastering them. Yeah. The I'll tell you what happens to every recording that we do. It's recorded twice. It's recorded once on these nifty little ninjas, which make it easy for Lena and Igor, correct me if I get the technicals wrong, um, for them to make into a file for editing. But it's also recorded on our cameras. And that's so that we, myself and Jesus, keep a raw copy of every single thing that we create so that there's two copies. Data can never be lost. Then Lena spends about how many hours would you spend? Four hours? More? Yeah. Tell me honestly, how much would you spend editing a book group? A day. Yep. About a day. Yeah. Because it's something that you don't just sit down and do in one go, is it? You have to sit down. Prepare the footage, import it, organise the sound. Often ego is involved in the process. Yeah. Helping... <laughs> Because he's doing all this, remember, with every other thing that yep. we create. Yep. Yep. And yep. then the actual editing and then... Which in, you have to synchronise sound with two videos, don't two you? Videos. And switch between them. Yep. Yep. And um, after that we do um, outputting. That takes um, a few hours. And after that we do compressing and that takes several hours. So it's a day's, it's a day's work really. Yeah, about yep. 26 hours plus. Okay, so 26 hours to create the video file. And AJ strips the sound from each one and makes a sound file, which he puts on our website. What else do you do in that process? Anything? Then it goes, then we send it to New South Wales to be uploaded onto the internet which takes time from <laughs> Teresa, which is someone some of you might not have even met. But she does a, an amazing service for us because we live in the bush 
and it's very hard to upload such huge files given our satellite connections to the internet. We actually copy it onto a disk, post it to her, she receives it and she's got high bandwidth and she uploads every single one that we do. Once it's uploaded, then AJ logs on and he edits the name of the file, he puts tags so it's all searchable, you can just enter a date or a topic and you get the f every file where that was covered. So he does a lot of work there and then you have, there's your finished product. And amongst all of this, I feel you guys, everyone who receives um, divine truth is served. You are guided and you are valued. You are served in a lot of ways. If you think about it, I've just talked about the physical ways that you're served. But there's also, I don't know, I feel a lot of you don't notice sometimes. A few weeks ago, um, I was giving book group and AJ was doing the camera work so that Lena could participate in book group. And then he, he did that for two hours. And then he got up and gave a talk. And while he was doing it, I did the microphone running for everyone. So, and... Nobody really stops to consider... We love doing it. We love service. But I, at the time, I thought, yeah, nobody's really noticing the, the level of service that's being provided. So if we're giving gifts when, when we're fostering not gratitude but expectation, is this really loving? If we're creating situations where people are constantly served... And they, instead of feeling it as a gift, they come to expect it or demand it. Then I have to question about giving the gift anymore. Because I'm fostering something that's not loving within them. Yeah. And this last one moved me quite a lot writing about it. Because f for me, this is one of the most beautiful gifts I've ever received in my life, is to be valued. To have someone really value me as a person... And I know that AJ and myself, Lena, Igor, Vlad, who usually does the camera work, Sarah, Joy, we all have this attitude of valuing you guys. We value your comfort, we value what, how you feel, what you want to say, how you want to interact in this forum. We don't always meet all your addictions, but we do value you personally. So that's what I feel happens at Book Group. So now, we've covered the time, haven't we? Let's just cover it really clearly. Lena spends about 26 hours on the editing. Lena and Igor spend at least uh, three and a half hours in person here. So they come, they set up, they film, they dismantle. So say that's seven hours between them. I myself spend, well, that depends. <laughs> if, if I count how much I prepare for the group, then giving the group, and then what I might do after the group, to, like, as in a, like to follow up with you guys on the blog or something, it can be anywhere between seven and ten hours a week. In amongst all kinds of other things that I'm doing for Divine Truth, like mentoring people with the God's Way of Love organisation or preparing a different talk or managing a booking or making our travel arrangements or, or whatever it is, usually I would spend yeah, a fair amount of time in a week just focusing on how I want to teach you guys, what the last week reflected to me, where I feel we need to go as a group, what it's, you know, how I can serve you better basically, how I can honour truth most in this space. Now, that's not in counting the events team who do a lot of stuff just on the ground on the day. And Joy also does a lot to um, liaise with when we were hiring somewhere with the bookings and things like that. So how much time would you reckon you spent on that, Joy? <laughs> a few hours, underestimating it probably. Let's say five hours. So that's a lot of time you can see, hey?
Are we traveling, everyone? Remember, I'm not talking about this stuff to make you feel guilty or self-punishing. It's really just the facts. It's just the facts of what happens. Yeah. Okay. So that's the physical things that go into book group each week in terms of time. Then there's also the venue hire that we used to have. Peter and Claire have generously donated this one to us for this last couple of weeks, which has been beautiful. But before that, we were paying $100 a week. And um, also there's things like wear and tear on our car, on all this sound system, or all of these. And that's not if something... Like, that's just general wear and tear, things that are going to need repairs or our car payment or whatever it is. That's, a, that's a, an ongoing expense, so we'll call that. And vehicle. Now, if something were to break, <laughs> that would be a whole other expense because we're dealing with highly technical equipment, obviously. Yeah. So they're the other things that, that go into book group each week. Now let's talk about the donation side of it. On average, so we've had, I can't remember if it's 18 or 19 book group sessions now. We're up to chapter what? 13, <laughs> but we're taking our time. So I think 18, let's say 18 meetings. On average, the um, donations have been $350 per week. So that's, that's last week we had 400 But 350 before then, apart from one other week where someone had obviously given a large amount, that was the highest that we came with, with donations. On average, how many people do you reckon come to book group? Yeah, I'd say it's more like 60. In this group, I'd say we've only got about 50, perhaps. But usually at the hall, I've counted times when we've had 70 people. So if we divided that into 350, it's good. We even get to do maths in book group now. <laughs> how, how much is that per person? Five, about $5. So that's, that's averaging... So, so, 350 divided by, I did, I did a sum on here. It's not my favourite thing to do sums. Oh, if we divide it by 70, we do get five. So, it's perhaps a little over five if we have 60 people. So, that's five dollars per person. For the two hours, say you're just viewing it as the two hours of book group that you come and we have group. That means you value it at $2.50 an hour. And I personally think it's worth a bit more than that. <laughs> and I'm saying that not to solicit money, but I'm just saying I just feel it's worth a bit more than that to, to people personally. When I worked it out, I realised that most people would pay this for their chai latte or a DVD hire, um, you know, so, uh, just a, a living expense. Then, because I was really having to work with this issue in the last week, <laughs> I thought about it some more. And I thought, yeah, I can feel, actually, that there are some people who give more than that every week. I know that. And I thought, and because actually I have to count everything to, ba to bank it. I was counting it and I, I just counted the notes, the number of notes. So last week, say there was 55 of us here last week. I think that's what I... Last week there was 17 notes donated and no gold coins. So that means a maximum of 17 people donated out of 55. And some people might have put in two notes. So that means quite a lot of people didn't even value the time enough to make any donation. So that's about a third of everyone feels 
that it's worth giving something. Now, I know a couple of you make internet, regular internet donations. So obviously, you're, you're donating towards these things. And again, I'm not trying to say you should all be donating because I'm never going to charge for divine truth. <laughs> I'm always going to want to give it for free and that's the only way I'll ever give it. But again, I had to look at, hang on, there's an attraction at work here. I'm being shown something about how people are valuing what is being given. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is where we get really mathsy now. And I, I find the maths hard, so that's why I have to keep looking at the thing. I've got an emotional block. Okay. Oh, that's right. So we've had 18 uh, book group sessions. We say, if we say at $350 each. That equals, so in this year, $6,300. Now, in the past financial year, AJ and I have donated $10,500 to Lena and Igor because we see what a service they provide to us and to others, but they help us in our desires. In this financial year alone, we've donated $4,000 to them. So this is when I really had to say, hey, <laughs> I am running at a loss. <laughs> this is, it's not ethical for me to keep running something that runs at a loss. If I'm spending more than is coming in, I'm not operating in God's laws here. <laughs> So I have to really look at that. I also have to look at not only my time but Lena and Eagle, how much time they're actually putting into this and how much money I'm able to give them. If it was just on book group alone, there's, I give them money from book group but there's not so much I can give them relative to, they have, relative to their time. They have the responsibility to care for themselves as much as I do. So if I'm asking them to do something that I can't actually like, help them to do, there's an eth ethical issue there for me. Yeah. And I want you guys to understand how I made this decision. Yeah. Any questions? It's okay, guys. We all just got to feel it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, well... I've got a whole list of um, the emotional issues I think are involved. But before I get to that, I'm going to disclose my financial uh, situation for the last financial year. Because I, I, I want to be open with you guys about what we do receive and what... Honestly, hello, I'm talking about money with a video camera here. <laughs> I'm sure this can be misconstrued in like a zillion ways. But really, my purpose is just to be open and to let you know how we do use our money. Because we're accused a lot of, you know, exploiting money, <laughs> exploiting people for money. And I know many of you, your families, are, like, freak out. How much money are you giving? I only know this because you come and tell me. How much money are you giving these people? And um, people have very little concept of, of what our own financial situation really is and how we use the money we receive. I'll say again that some people are incredibly generous with us. There is, in the last financial year, from eight individuals or families, so eight separate donations, we received $135,000. That is a lot of money and those people are... Like, we, we have so much gratitude towards them, not only because they, um, you know, want to be generous, <laughs> they want to support something that's beyond their own, um, what they can get from life, um, but also because they enable the truth to go to so many people who don't have the financial situation. They just simply don't have it. And because people gener generously donate things, large sums of money, we're able to travel. We're able to share divine truth with people who would never have that opportunity otherwise. And uh, frankly, we're, allowed, we're able to share it with some of you guys who couldn't, who couldn't donate the same amount of money that they do. But that, let's look at it. 
We have a company called Divine Truth. And so every donation you, receive, you give us, we declare as income on Divine Truth. We're not eligible for not-for-profit because of being Jesus and Mary Magdalene. <laughs> That's oversimplifying the, the statement. But there's a lot of logistics and we're happy to pay tax. <laughs> you know, we're happy to do it. So um, our total income... For Divine Truth was $209,260. That was made up from interest of $3, <laughs> rebates of $2,382. This document is going to be available on the internet, by the way, so you can read it all in full. The $135,000 from eight families. Donations from seminars came to $55,000. So that's over all the seminars that we gave in the year. And internet donations came to $16,422. So that's how it happened. Now I'll tell you what AJ and I personally drew as our personal income. So yep, let's do that. So AJ's income was $11,000 and mine was five. Our superannuation was one and a half. That's how much as I said, we took as income. The absolute rest of it went back into sharing divine truth. So 90% of what we receive, we give back and we feel good about that. <laughs> we want to do that, you know. That's our desire. That's why we came here and we feel we live very comfortably actually um, because most of the time we love teaching <laughs> and that's what we do most. We spend most of our time teaching or hanging out at home, eating our vegan food and enjoying each other's company. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what we like to do. Yeah. So we donated $10,500 to Lena and Eagle, which is actually pretty close to our personal income because we could see that how much work they're doing and we want them to be able to live as well. Um, our travelling expenses were $35,000, uh, 35500 we spent money on our vehicles, on computers, which, of which we have a number because we, we actually bought a new computer for Lena and Igor to do more editing um, and because we're dealing with so much data. Um, sound equipment and maintenance was $11,000 and purchase of sound and video equipment took up a lot of expenses as well. And we had a loss from the year before, which was actually absorbed then in this year because if we operate at a loss for three years in a row they they make us close down our company so we were very fortunate last year that we didn't have a loss this year we've received far less donations in fact um, in one month what we received in one month last year uh, if we compare that to one month in this financial year we're receiving a third of that um, which is why we seriously need to consider joining the workforce in another way <laughs> um, because we can't sustain what we do on the donations that we're receiving, which is okay with us, as I said. It's totally okay with us. But it, I just want to be transparent with you about what, what, what's happening and why we're making these decisions. I feel there's also some emotions at play for people. If you looked at the... Um, the, the income that came from seminars as opposed to internet donations. There's quite a differential. And if you notice in the last 12 months really, AJ and I have done less person-to-person -person teaching and we focused a lot on doing interviews because we feel actually you get a higher calibre of information when you sit down and really solidify a subject. 
So we've done that as a service also. And we've done a lot of travel. We've travelled a lot in this past 12 months. But because of that, we have received less donations. And especially in the last coming up to six months, now we've been home, but we haven't done, we've done, I think, one seminar in person. So what does it tell you that we get more, we get, even though we're outputting a huge amount on the internet every week, pretty much, and there's how many new um, recordings have gone up on YouTube in the last six months? Five, uh, uh, some huge amount of hours. It's massive. But why do you think it is that we receive more in seminars than we do on the internet? No? Um, because we're meeting personal addictions and making people feel good. There's, yeah, there's a feeling, isn't there, of, oh, I got some good feelings. <laughs> uh, I got some attention. And so people are paying or donating, showing their gratitude. Is it really for the gift of truth or is it for the personal attention? And again, this is something that AJ and I feel strongly that we have to look at. We've actually reduced the amount of um, person-to-person contact that we've had quite a lot because we can feel this thing growing, <laughs> this feeling of expectation where it's actually stopping you in your growth. You know, if you just get hooked on the little, oh, feeling AJ in this awesome space, talking about truth and you feel inspired and, yep, that was great and you, you like the... The oh, nice feeling that I got some attention from, from Jesus, uh, rather than, wow, <laughs> what he just said could change my life. Then w- it's not loving for us to keep fostering that in you guys. And that's also why, you know, I've been having this theme of saying, guys, we've got to confront addictions more, we've got to look at this more. And, and it's been great for me in this process as well, with this interplay between us all of, okay, I can see where I've got to look at being more frank, being more upfront, because I want to serve you. And when I think about serving you, I think about the gift of truth. <laughs> that, is a, that is something that has changed my life, having people tell me the truth. One person in particular. <laughs> 24-7. But honestly, guys, it's awesome. <laughs> and I feel a lot of you don't feel that yet. Do you know? And... That's all emotions that I personally have had to go through. I've had to go through, back there, before I thought truth was awesome, I hate this. I I hate this. This is hard, you know. This feels like hard work and I don't want to do this and I have to keep facing things about myself and I want to punish myself and it's all bad. And Can't I just be a good person? Could we go back to the natural love path and say you're already perfect and all of those things? And that was emotions that I had to go through. And I feel like there's rebellion. There's rebellion in some of you. Feel it. Feel it as an emotion. Because trust me, this is about relating to God. God only operates in the currency of truth and love. (laughs) And if we don't get the truth bit first, we can't get the love. So that's why I'm challenging you again <laughs> to, to look at this, this resistance to truth inside of yourselves. Yvonne? Um, one of the things that really struck me out of the chapter that we're not reviewing <laughs> <laughs> is, yep. just, is just this point that um, it was just another reminder of how important it is for me to take on truth for my own progress but also because otherwise if I deny truth and then through my judgments, I'm actually limiting the potential for others in the world. And the, Massively. And the only way that I can actually really help um, share divine truth in the world is through my own example and my own growth, but also to be willing to stay in truth and honour truth so that everybody else has the possibility rather than me limiting that by my beliefs or... Um, not wanting to con- confront my fears about always being in truth, et cetera, et, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. We often think, you know, I can't tell the truth, I'm too afraid, it's all about me. And and in, that's what fear does, it makes us insular and selfish and all of these things. When we really recognise, hang on, being truthful is being me. <laughs> being truthful, I've heard that being truthful is a gift. How does that work? 
okay, when I'm really myself, that's more honest with everyone around me. If I really speak the truth of what I feel or what I know, I give other people the opportunity to not only know me but discover that same truth. But when we're afraid, we're like, oh, no, I, you know, I, I shouldn't say that to them. It doesn't really matter. I know, I'll work on it. But it's a, it's a way of avoiding a whole, a whole rack of emotions. Yeah. Back at, with Jennifer. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, this is very relevant for me, all of this discussion. Yeah. Um, but one of the things that, that I do that's really unloving is I think I'm offering truth, like you're saying, because I have had lots of fear in the past of speaking the truth and being real. Mm -hmm. But now I'm making the mistake of... Um, being unloving in giving the truth. Yeah. And or at least my perspective, my errored perspective <laughs> of it. And yeah. So it's been really painful to realize that that when I think sometimes I'm saying something useful and truthful that it's actually coming from anger. Yeah. And this is where truth is always emotional. Everything is really all emotional. Like, for example, today, I'm up here telling you a bunch of facts. Now, I could tell you these facts from a lot of different emotional places, couldn't I? I could be doing it with a, you know, a hurt heart. You don't love me. You don't value me. And this is the facts of it. <laughs> couldn't I? Or I could be doing it like, huh, you're all punished, you know? You don't get any more of me because you didn't, like, give me enough. Or I could be doing it like, um, you know, we're here to save the world and what are you doing? Yeah, I could guilt you. There's so many things that would be the truth. It's what is coming from my soul in this interaction. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have that, you know. It's, yeah. I don't get it yet in my soul. Yeah, and this is where it requires humility, hey. And looking at our motivations for speaking. Remember a couple of weeks ago I tried to have this discussion with you? Can you remember how horrible it was? I don't want to remember it, but anyway. Um, and that was because it was coming from the wrong place. I hadn't done the emotional work that I've done in the last week to talk to you about it, to get it clear in my heart. I didn't want to value myself. I didn't want to stand up here and, and say, you know, look, this is the truth of it all. I had all these fears about how everyone was going to perceive it. And, and that was about me not knowing my own heart. When you know your own heart, you know what is motivating you. you know, and you can speak from that place. Sometimes when we decide to give truth, we don't want to know our own heart. We, we actually feel pissed. No, I'm telling them this truth, you know, or I'm hurt and that's not fair. So I'm telling them from this place. And none of that is actually giving a gift. That's all about us avoiding humility and speaking. Does everyone get that? Yeah. Okay, back to this. <laughs> Let's talk. Oh, the other thing I was going to point out about, you know, this idea that I'm talking about where seminars, when people receive this kind of, they can enter addiction a little too easily and they, they feel more generous at those times. There's also the issue of the hard disk drive copying that's been going on. Um, many people are giving to the person who copies the drive without a thought for the person who prepared the material, gave the material, edited the material, copied the material, made it all possible because they received the drive. Oh, thank you, that's a real service. And don't really think. And this is where I'm talking to you guys about awareness. How aware are you of what's actually going on? You know all these things that I talked about where AJ's doing the camera and Mary's doing the microphone and we're giving talks. How, how aware are you? That, that how, many no, how many people notice that? Or you just notice the microphone in your hand or you notice the thing on YouTube and go, oh, that's good. How many of you are really looking at what's going on in your life and what's really happening and why don't you want to? Why, why aren't you thinking, wow, this through the mist book is pretty life-changing, actually? <laughs> Jennifer? 
<laughs> this is so perfect. Um, this is actually related to what your question was about the book. Yes. And, you know, where are we not putting God first? And, I mean, th this is exactly the experience I just had this week. It's like I was not putting the love of people first. I was putting my excitement about a project first. And, it's and can it really be excitement if, if in your excitement you deny love of others? Yeah. There's got to be some addiction in there, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. every pure emotion is based in love. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I tell you what, about this issue with donations and the issue of valuing what you receive and noticing what you receive, a lot of us are just really afraid of what it's going to uncover. We, we have a vested interest in being unaware. Because when I get up here and talk to you about this and I say, well, look, I think there's some big gifts going on in your life. What does that bring up for you? <laughs> a lot of stuff, hey. A lot of like, well, okay, am I really receiving that gift? What am I doing with all the truth I've received? Has my life changed in the last three years? What, if I do value this and I want these people to continue but, and I can't give them any money, I can't, uh, what am I going to do? Uh, like, that means I've got to face my money issues as well. <laughs> so there's all kinds of things that go on, isn't there? And so, and I'm, I'm pointing this out as a key lesson because I feel... We can relate it to this situation in Book Group right now, but it's an epidemic <laughs> on the planet where we don't want to be aware. And, you know, just that one lesson, if I can leave you with that one lesson, I've got another three pages, but <laughs> if I can leave you with that one lesson, it's, I feel it's pretty big. AJ and I spend a lot of time reflecting in our life, in our day-to-day -day life, when we, and not in some kind of anally retentive, um, <laughs> nitpicky way. We just realise that when you're really connected to yourself and you have an interaction with someone, there's stuff there, there's feelings there, and we, we notice them and we go, what is God trying to show me through this? What is God showing me about this situation? What, you know, how can I grow towards God? How can I love this person better? What are my errors that are preventing me knowing God or loving this person or loving myself in this situation. Um, so we really focus on this issue of awareness. And, and sometimes it's like the thing that you, when you switch it, you can't switch it off again. <laughs> and sometimes you rue it. You're like, oh, no, I can feel that. I'm, I can't avoid that anymore. And then when you just think you've kind of evened out on that level, <laughs> another flick switches, <laughs> switch flicks. Switch flicks. <laughs> yep. And there's a whole new level of sensitivity and awareness. Yeah. But for many of you, I feel, you know, you might be happy to be intellectually aware. But what about this other issue of emotional awareness? And many of you feel like, yeah, I know I'm receiving gifts and this is wonderful. But if you felt that, you would be led into other things. And I don't just mean donations. <laughs> you would be living your life in a way that reflects more and more of the teachings. And this would be a powerful attractor for other people. Do you see that when you really are aware of a gift, you value it? You, you attempt to use it? Some of the things that we tell you in these groups, people have waited and searched and looked for like thousands of years. And yet, for some of you, it's not even worth, like, attending, like, attending emotionally to or leaving a gold coin donation. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Okay. All right. I'm getting ahead of my hand out here. Yeah. The other thing was that when we raise awareness sometimes, people, when we say, look, Leah and Igor have got to live, they're struggling, you know, then people go, oh, well, I'll do the video editing. Uh, oh, here, just show me. <laughs> now, what's, what's the issue with that? Go on.
well, I'm actually expecting them to help me to do that. It like, takes I'm not them taking self-responsibility. Yeah, you, not taking responsibility. Often people are not even taking responsibility for their own learning. Lena and Ingo have taught themselves everything and they produce also things at a very high standard. And by just saying, oh, yeah, I'll just do it, it sort of really devalues their their capacities, what they're actually doing. And it helps you jump over the issue of money. Just neatly. <laughs> I'll do something because I'm afraid about this money issue. So it doesn't value them. It also usually, correct me if I'm wrong, would take you so much more than twice your time to actually teach someone to how, to how to do it, you know? Oh, because I know that often people say that without realising what's involved and in most cases it's ended up with people not doing anything. Yeah, absolutely. AJ and myself have spent money to buy... We have new... Two... One. Two new laptops sitting at home because people have said... I will do your video editing. We went, right, we will make it happen. We bought a new laptop, we bought the software for the laptop and we said, here you go. It sat with people for three months, six months, they haven't touched it or they've used the computer for something else and we've gone, we've got to take that back. <laughs> you know, so we've done things to try to help people, to help us, but, it, you know, there's a lot of expectation that it will mean... Personal one-on-one -on -one assistance with AJ, often. Lena and Eagle will know that that doesn't that <laughs> doesn't come with the packaging, does it? They work hard, these guys. Some days they show up at our house to do an interview. They set up, we sit down, we do the interview. They pack up, they go home again. <laughs> That's like a job, <laughs> you know. There's no. Sometimes I feed them something. <laughs> <laughs> but that's only if I've just had a good time cooking and I want to share it, you know. It's not a part of a payment or anything. Um, other people want to help because they just want to avoid the money feelings. They go, look, these guys are doing something good. I do like it. I just I can't hardly care for myself. So I'll just do something without really taking responsibility for what it means to do something. And if you really want to do a thing, any time in your life when you've really wanted to do a thing, did you wait for people to teach you and hold your hand through it? And no, you just learnt what you had to learn and get on and get went on and did it. Um, so that shows us also that there's there's not a sincere desire there for people. Okay. So this is the one that I've touched on. I suppose the issues that I'm going to talk about now are about why I feel like what we do, book group and other things, are not really valued. And I mean from this space, not this space. So this is one of the things, I think. It makes you really paranoid about your spelling when you write on a whiteboard, by the way. You're like, oh, hang on, I want to get it right. Uh, resistance to personal truth. And I'm going to say it really bluntly. I feel lots of people feel receiving truth is a hardship, not a gift. And I see people rebelling against it. You know, sometimes you guys hear in your comments, you're, you're saying, yeah, that's all good, but I just, you know... It's just harder. I'm just angry with God. And while I have just said just before you need to feel those emotions, I feel there's a tendency to sit in them and to want to have a forum here in this group for those feelings, which actually doesn't help you feel them. I feel that the, the thing to talk about in this group is the, the quality of the information we've received and how we've, we've realised it relates to us. Wow, yeah, and this is where I'm going because I've learned this. And now that kind of sharing, I feel, is really valuable. When we put up a hand and go, look, yeah, I get it, but <laughs> that to me is just displaying this emotion because we don't want to apply it to our personal lives. And many of you, I see this with Jesus all the time. There's just this feeling of like, 
oh, I'll endure it or I know it's good for me, so tell me. <laughs> How do you think it feels when you, you know, do you really feel like, it, to us it feels like, wow, this person's really engaged with their learning and growth when they're like, oh, okay, you're right, yeah. No, it, we go, yep, we'll honour the truth, but it doesn't, it's not really attractive to give you more because already you, your will is saying, no, 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 this is too much. I want to keep this vision of myself or, uh, you know, I've had enough today or whatever it is. Not recognising what a gift truth is. Yeah. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And, yep, touch on that. The other thing that um, I feel makes people not value particularly as much as they perhaps would what we give, so we've done resistance to personal truth, is this set of emotions. Shame and embarrassment. Now, what do you think I mean by that? What, what, might, uh, what might you feel ashamed and embarrassed about listening to teachings of divine truth, Alwyn? I feel deeply ashamed and embarrassed and I, I couldn't ever have a personal uh, conversation with you now because I feel so... So I've had all this... You know, these gifts and I haven't done anything with them. I just feel like I haven't progressed at all, you know. Oh, and Alan. I, I feel so, ba- so embarrassed about it. Yeah. So ashamed. Yeah. Yeah. Darling, that's not what I meant. <laughs> and also, um, I feel one of your biggest blocks is just how hard you are on yourself, you know. In, and I love talking to you. <laughs> and the times that we have spoken... But each time I felt that, f- that feeling, you know, like you feel hard on yourself about it. You feel like I should do more. And actually that's probably the biggest thing that's holding you back. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about shame and embarrassment about knowing Jesus and Mary. Oh, oh, I don't feel that. Oh, no, no, no. Remember, this is why you don't value divine truth. Uh, guys, I gotta, I gotta disagree with you. Like, how, Barbara? How many of you, like, uh, honestly, if this didn't have Jesus and Mary Magdalene attached to it, you, I know some of you, you would have been like, telling the whole, hey, I'm onto this stuff. It is awesome. Check this out. Or you yourself, in your personal like interactions with people, would have been far more open. So you, you can't tell me that's not shame and embarrassment stopping you there. Also, I feel you would have taken on board so much more of what we've said already. Because you so, there's this fear. So I should add fear here. Hang on. Where's the catch? Where's the bit where he starts the mind control? You know, where's this thing where we have to give all our money away? You know, hang on. You know, there's all that in the way. And it stops you valuing what you receive because you're in fear or shame. Barbara? It's a bit hard to talk at the moment. But um, during the week, I had a case where this was highlighted to me, where an interaction with somebody outside of our group was at my property and we were discussing something that was going to get done. And, uh, oh, it was, we were buying, um, getting the Debrosio delivered. Yeah. And um, uh, the guy said to me, oh, you know, we've really got short supplies and, um, you know, a guy last year brought all of the stocks and... And I said, yeah, I, I knew that. That's why I haven't been able to get any. But the new stocks are coming on now. And he said... Just yeah. to give context, that was us. That was yeah, these yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, I think that was... And this is my shame and embarrassment. Mm-hmm. I said, oh... And I made excuses by saying... I said, oh, that was AJ Miller um, at um, Wilkesdale. And he says, yeah, it was a guy at Wilkesdale. And I said... He said, what name did you say? And I said, AJ Miller. He said... And he, so we went off and got the second to load and load and deliver. And he jumped out of the car, and this is a person not associated with us at all. And he says, "No, it wasn't AJ Miller. It was Jesus and Mary who bought it." <laughs> 
so he had no embarrassment whatsoever yeah. of saying it was Jesus and Mary. Yeah. And here I said it was A.J. Miller. <laughs> now, I made the excuse to myself, well, I said that because he wouldn't know who Jesus and Mary was. <laughs> but the reality is... Yeah. The lo- all the local people know who Jesus is. Of course is. And they he do. had no embarrassment in saying it. Yeah. But I did. We had a lovely young guy turn up at our place the other day. I think he went by you, didn't he, Lily? And he drove in the driveway and he said, uh, what did he say to you? Is the microphone there? He said, um, yeah, this is a bit of a funny uh, question for a Sunday morning, but I'm looking for Jesus. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he lives up the road <laughs> and gave him directions. And he came, he's got a property somewhere near here that he wanted to offer to all of us to use if we ever want to camp or, you know, want to do something for the community or whatever. He would like to offer that land because he's not using it at the moment. So you can see how much our own fears create like this perception of prejudice even. I don't really receive much prejudice, touch for it, <laughs> when we go to town. I feel people recognise us all the time. But people like largely just we treat them normally, they treat us normally. Yeah, yeah. But this shame and embarrassment, and if you think about it for a lot of you, it's, your, it's, not, just, it's not really members of the community but your personal friends and your family, people you would usually interact with, it's because you have this feeling around it, it means that the value you place on divine truth is it's going to be lessened. Yeah. Okay. I should write that properly. What are some other reasons? Oh, this one I thought was very interesting. What does somebody usually do on the planet when they discover something that works? Share it. Do they share it? Is that the first thing that they do? <laughs> what do they do? If you go back to Alan, just behind you. If they're just there. Yeah. How can I make some money out of this? Yeah, they copyright it, don't they? Yeah. They copyright it, they put a price tag on it, they package it up. And then they share it (laughs) and you can have it for a price. What does AJ do when he discovers something new? Hey, he's, you know, busting down the seminar gates to tell you. He wants to know. He wants everyone to know. He wants the whole world to know. Now, why would that mean you don't value divine truth very much? Why would that lead people to value it less, let's say it that way? Um, Just... Just something that hit me, Mary, was um, the lack of self-worth. I'm just starting to work through at the moment around money, interesting enough. Um, So I just thought, does that work in the same way? You know, if you find some information that's for free, do we package it so it's got more value to it if we don't – if we don't have lack of self-worth? Is that – You mean what would drive someone to charge for information? Yeah, yeah. No, I think – that it's fear-based and yeah. it's greed-based. Yeah. And it, so there's a lot of lack and greed kind of emotions in it. Mm. Yeah. I don't necessarily feel that AJ has got a huge sense of self-worth, but he has a desire to give and to love. Um, yeah. Okay, something yeah. for me to ponder on more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you pass back to Sandra, she was going to answer that question. I thought that Alan um, touched upon it when he said free because to me it seems like unless something costs, people value it less because they feel like money is what makes something worth. And if it's worth more, they're more likely to appreciate it. That's what I Isn't that weird? Yes. But it's true. And if we think about our homework for last week, which, which was to consider the things of, you know, what things we value in this life above the spiritual things... Like, you, money doesn't even exist in the spirit world. And yet when someone puts a price tag on something, we go, oh, that's got quality, that's got value, that's, you know. So I feel there's, there's a lot about um, the world's perception of something. But there's even more. Lena? I feel if I paid money um, that I had to work for, then I would value the purchase and I would do my best then to... To utilise it. To utilise it. Yes. 
think about it. If we just packaged everything we knew up, if you think back in your life even, into a weekend seminar and we did, you know, on the true nature of God and I mean like a, a proper where you get a booklet and you have to pay an entry fee and you sit in the little air-conditioned whatever, how many of you would pay 500 bucks for that in the past? And the rest. Five, five grand, there you go. There you go. Somebody does it for free and we're like, yeah, this is cool. But, you know, am I really motivated to put it into practice in my day-to-day life? Well, I can go again next month and see what I reckon, you know. If we go Sandra and then to Yvonne. But it never felt good. Like when the truth, when something spiritual was to pay, be paid for, I never was, I, I was like, but I couldn't understand. Yeah. You know, there was something, even though I was willing to, it didn't sit well with me, so yeah. there was obviously some yeah. truth that was inside of me that truth is free, you know? Yes, yeah. Yes. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because Ada and I both have the ethos that truth should be free for everyone. But now I'm talking to you about donations and money. What's going on? What, can you see, what, can you see the, the finer points I'm making? I'm not saying you should have to pay monetarily, but I'm saying that your donations are a reflection of the way you value something. And that's really the point Lena's making. She values it. She used to value it more if she had to work and then pay, and then she would pay more attention to it. Yeah, yeah. If we come forward to Yvonne. I've heard Jesus say too that if um, we believed that he was Jesus and that you were Mary, then we would do what he said. (laughs) We would want to do what he says. <laughs> yeah, but it's funny, isn't it? Like there's a hundred ways we just sidestep action and truth, isn't there? There's, a, there's excuses we make. I agree. If you guys all suddenly had a – it's crazy to say that. If you had an angelic revelation that he was Jesus, because some of you have had a spirit come and tell you he's Jesus. But you still sit on the fence about it, you know. (laughs) Um, If you really believed it, yeah, you'd be like, I've had this realisation and it was the most humbling thing that it probably cheapens it to put it in words. But recognising who he is, not because, oh, Jesus of the church or the Bible, but recognising the special relationship that the special condition that God created for someone to create this relationship, to learn so much about God and then serve everyone else with it, that is incredibly humbling. And it is, it is like knocked down like levels of resistance that you wouldn't believe inside of me. You know, I just wanted to sit there and hear everything <laughs> because I could feel not just intellectually reason, I could feel here is someone who is further progressed than me, I can learn from them. If I listen with my heart to what they're saying, I can grow. Now, So in that way, yes, if we all had that realisation, there would be far less resistance to, to all of these things and far greater value placed on what's spoken about. If we go back to Julianne at the back. Liz, if you just keep your hand up, Julianne, it's here with Lizzie, yeah. Thank you, guys. Mary, um, with regards to Jesus, the love, I see the love that he gives as a generosity and it's just so comfortable to sit here and and feel such generosity coming from, from both of you, with the book club particularly, and that's about the closest that I can equate to love because it's so out there and this world is not particularly a generous world yet that's all we've ever been shown is is a generosity yet I feel that it's been now become an expectation yeah on on my part to expect this love that I don't have um and the closest I can say that it's, it is this incredible pouring out of generosity that doesn't cease. Yes. Yeah. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. And, yeah. and I just keep taking and taking and taking. And I suppose that's what I'm pointing out is that there, there's a lot of – I've pointed that out in a few different ways – this idea of expectation – 
Because it feels good, hey? Especially when AJ's up here, he's got a lot to give. He's a very giving person and he's very developed. And so there's a lot and it feels wonderful. But we're not really even, like we were talking about before, receiving the gift of it if, we, if it breeds expectation and addiction in us of just like, oh, this is soothing, <laughs> you know. Trust me, when you really engage with a person, it's dynamic. And, and that's why I thank some of you at the beginning who come and you're really engaged because I feel this, this dynamic interplay happen between us. When someone is sitting in the chair and present, there's like a to and fro. They might not say anything. Some of you are quite engaged and you rarely say anything. But I can feel you. You're not in addiction with me. You're, you're growing. You're learning. You want to know. You're fascinated. There's respect. There's all these things. But what you're talking about, Julianne, I agree. It happens for a lot of people. There's this expectation. Oh, you know, it's Jesus of Wilkesdale, <laughs> which is probably how the locals call us. You know, it's not, it's not this life-changing opportunity in my lap. Um, it's just like what we do. We're in this group. We do this. And, you know, he said the truth should be free for everyone. So I don't really have to give anything. And it just shows there's no dynamic thing happening there, is there? It's just a habit. Yeah. Graham? Um, for me, I think one resistance I have towards um, making donations sometimes is anger. Like, Can I just stop you there? I want you to continue. But can I say, Graham, you're one of the most generous people that I know. You have given so much to us. You loan us your... Um, I, thing big machinery lifter tipper thing <laughs> I'm embarrassed backhoe Back that's I thought it was but also you have given uh, I don't know if you want to say the sum of money but a huge sum of money not personally to us but to enable the learning the God's way of love learning center in Wilkesdale you know I feel like but please proceed like but I just wanted to and I see you actually being very generous with people around you People come and stay in your home all the time. You're continually giving gifts. It's beautiful. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, well, aside from that. <laughs> <laughs> aside from all the giving I do give. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it feels like there's sometimes anger there and it's like we've been forced all our lives to pay through the nose for everything and we're yeah. angry about that. And yeah. when we get the opportunity where we don't have to pay for it, it's a little bit like how when the, the controls are removed from society, you get looting and rioting and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. hey, we're not being forced to do this anymore, so we're just going to take revenge. Yeah. And it feels yeah. a bit like that. Yeah, and can you see also how the people who are generous get punished for the stinginess of other people? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very good point that you raise, yeah. This so, but it's more emotions, isn't it, for us to feel through and to be aware. Hang on, this emotion is driving me here, but it doesn't even belong with these people. It belongs with these people in my past who made me work hard or were really stingy with me or, all, you know, all of those things. Yeah, thanks, Graham. Jen had a hand up. I don't think I could be here if it wasn't for Graham. <laughs> you pointed that out? Yeah. That I missed? yeah. The charity. Yeah. yeah. Lots of charity. What, what I wanted to say... I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. What I wanted to say, though, is that I have a, a worry, a rebellion maybe, that things are measured in monetary value. What I would like would be that perhaps I can't give $5... But I can come and sweep the floor and or I could share a kind word which I feel in my heart are of equal value to the $5 donation. But I'm seeing from your talk that logistically it takes the $5 donation or the, the $10 donation to logistically run, enable... Yes, I'm saying um, that, but I'm also you. I I'm am saying struck. that, but I'm also saying something a bit deeper than that, and that is about sitting and saying, okay, why don't I have five dollars to give? Where do I spend five dollars elsewhere? And 
if God created me as a very creative, abundant soul, why isn't that happening in my life? I feel a lot of the times we do this double talk to ourselves about sweeping the floor or having a kind word, which I agree, very valuable. There's no question. And in fact, you know, money, this is one of the reasons I hate, didn't even want to talk about money because firstly, we all have so much baggage about it. But secondly, it's not even really real. It's just a system that we have on the planet. But how do we interact with that system? We can do it with gratitude, with abundance, with challenging ourselves in that system, or we can completely disengage with it in our rebellion or anger and just go, well, you know, I'm a broke person and that's how I live and not really challenge anything, you know, not really look at what is my attitude to money. I bumped into someone in, in Woolworths yesterday and we had a great chat, but she was saying, yeah, I'm looking for work. If I had work, then I could do this on the house and whatever. And, and I said, well, you know, there's obviously some blocks there for you. And, and we chatted on. And then as she walked off, she said, yeah, I'll get, you know, I'll just get that job and get some money, the root of all evil. And I said, there it is. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of feelings that we have about money being evil and corrupt and criminal even, you know. But there are errors as well. <laughs> Because money doesn't exist, really. It's just a thing that we use to do things with. And if it's the same thing if we do it from a place of love, of generosity, of trust, faith, abundance. Money's awesome. <laughs> if we do it from lack, fear, griping, anger, rebellion, all of these things, ew, yeah, money is yucky. And we're probably not going to have much of it. Yvonne? Um, if I can just address something that Jen said, though, too. The truth is, um, over the last year or two or whatever, we've been active up here. Thank you. Yes. Um, how few people have actually come up and said, can I, how can I help? Yes. So, so apart from the money side is important, and, the, and I have my own journey with that as well. But, but we know um, every time we go to Mergen or Wandai... It's the same people. There's the same half a dozen time. people, I can tell yep. you. You know who they are. Yep. yep. And, um, and there's nobody knocking us down saying, I'd like to help too. Exactly. You know? And often people come up and say, at the talk, Igor, I want to learn the sound. Yeah. Igor's in the middle of doing something else. No, I want to surf. <laughs> and it's actually that thing I was referring to earlier, it's not really a true desire. If you have a desire, you go, you sit there in the audience and go, what sound system are they using? How do you use that? Have I had experience with that? What could I find out about that? Yeah. Oh, Igor, I'd like to pop around or AJ Mary would like to pop around and just look it over and I think I know I could do it for the book group maybe and just learn as I go but I've done some research. This, this is someone who wants to serve, not someone who wants to be served while they're serving, which completely cancels it out, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so I agree. It, it, it all becomes platitudes, doesn't it? If we say, oh, well, you know, if I just do something, then that's as good as giving. And it's all, it just feels sort of airy-fairy to me. <laughs> you know, and it's comfy, isn't it? <laughs> it's a way to just sort of help us get away from this stuff with money. I don't know anyone on the planet who doesn't have stuff with money. Like, it's... And it, we're so afraid to talk about it, aren't we? Like you saw me a few weeks ago, I was terrified to talk about it because I know how, not because I have some evil scheme, but because I know how freaked out everyone else was going to get about it when I brought it up. So, you know, there's, I just know it's there in all of us. And it's not, I just feel the deeper message is, are we dealing with this stuff? Because we're here in this world, <laughs> are we really looking at this this thing that it's plaguing our thoughts, isn't it, most of us? Deirdre, last week it was your biggest thing, wasn't it? Like pff, money, wow. So you're spending a lot of time in fear around it. How are you challenging that fear with truth? And how are you looking at the ways that you value what's coming into your life? And the ways you can serve sincerely. Yeah. Can I say something? Yep. It was something else that um, Jesus said when you spoke about this last time and that was um, we all do have money and part of it is about um, 
at what priorities we choose, the choices that we make with that money. So it's not that we yeah. don't have any money. Yeah. And yes, there yes there is fear. And I found that was true for me when I looked at the situation and what yeah, I wanted to do. Yeah. And I, you know, perhaps this conversation would be going very differently if I was speaking in a slum in Brazil. <laughs> but I'm not, you know. I'm talking to a group of middle-class Australians. <laughs> so it's very, like, there are ways that we are using money every day. And in talking about this, I'm not saying, and you should be using it to give to me. I'm saying, what are you doing with the money that you have? How are you... Val what? It's, it actually speaks, as Jennifer mentioned before, directly to your homework question. You know, am I using my money towards things that will grow my soul forever or towards things that... Anna in Sweden wrote to me and she said, yes, I value the temporal when it comes to chocolate and tea. <laughs> I want those things more than I want my growth sometimes, you know. So how, how are we using the gifts that we, we are? It's, it's a gift. And, you know, I know, Julianne, you said before, you know, you haven't been shown generosity like this before. I, that's perhaps true. But many of us are shown generosity all the time by people around us, you know, and, and even the fact that, that we have income, some of us, is based on the generosity of others. So what, how do we receive and use that gift? For AJ and myself, we value your gifts very highly. We, and we do, we practice this in a number of ways. One, we, are all, we never leave the donation box like somewhere completely unattended because we would hate it if there was a theft of your money that you've, you know, that you've desired to give and that has perhaps, like, been hard for you to gain, that it would be all lost in one go. So we take care of where that money is. We bank it, we declare it as our income and then we use 90% of it to keep doing what we do because we know that's why you gave to us because you valued what we do. So that's how we value the gifts that are given to us. Yeah. Okay. I'm nearly through my list of emotions. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to finish off but I'm going to invite Lena and Igor up here to have a chat as well after that. Uh, Renee, you had your hand up. <laughs> um, I just wanted to. I just remembered that one of the old, the old spiritual group I was in, they used to once upon a time do all the workshops for free, and they recognised just through experimenting that um, people weren't getting the spiritual gains from the courses because um, they weren't in decision and making a decision to. Um, give on a giving flow um, and pay for it, really. They were just coming in going, yes, you know, oh, great, this is free, what can I get for it? So through experimenting, they decided to charge a price and just a very, it wasn't high, a low price, just what they thought was fair to pay for the room and everything like that. Yeah. And, um, and people were getting gains, like, and they recognised that all the spiritual knowledge they were passing on to get, they were giving... People were actually coming through and popping out the other end and getting... They were receiving they it. They were receiving it because they were in decision and they had um, chosen from their own free will that, yes, I do want to do this course and I'm willing to pay $200 and here it is. Yeah. And, um, yeah, people were, like, excited and, and the flow and the giving was... It was a big... It was beautiful. That's yeah. what I remember. So yeah. do you think we should start charging? No, I don't. <laughs> but not, not from my own thing because, I mean, I do my services by donation and yeah. I love that and yeah. I couldn't go back yeah. to what I used to do. Yeah. But it, – and it always balances out too, you know, and I love giving. If I can tell you, um, what AJ and I present is all about, like, helping you guys to understand and honour and use your free will. Do you see that? Like, get – if to to inspire you to teach you how to use your free will in harmony with love now we could charge money well we couldn't neither of us could do it <laughs> but if we did charge money and suddenly everyone's perked up and went oh i'm listening oh this is really good oh oh wow i've actually grown what have we just skipped over <laughs> huge emotions within people 
huge emotions around money, lack, worth, uh, all kinds of things. And actually, we've used a technique to get you to engage your will. And we never want to do that because we know your will is most beautiful when it is motivated by you. So we'll keep talking about divine truth as long as we can. And if we can't, then we'll just say, well, this is an issue about other people's will as well. They're, they're not feeling like they, you know, they're engaged with this. And, and as I mentioned before, this has not been just about donations, but also this feeling we have increasing in people where there's a, an expectation for personal time. And that's when I get it, when you say it to me. Not when I watch the DVD or when I reflect in my journal. When you say it, I get it. That, that's saying, that, no, 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 you didn't really get it. <laughs> you just got the interaction and you, you enjoyed that. Um, and when we see those things happening, then we go, okay, we step back from teaching. We do less of it because, one, it's not ethical for us to continue to do something that's running at a loss. You can all see that's logical. But two, our biggest desire is to foster environments where love can grow and learning can happen and truth can be spoken. And if we feel there's addiction growing in our interactions, then we try to address it. And sometimes the way to address it is to withdraw. Mm. Yeah. Okay, guys. That's, I just want to reiterate again because I know we've talked about some rocky topics, <laughs> that I know some of you really value this group. I know some of you go away each week and do your homework and that you really look at the lessons that are presented to you and thank you for that. Um, and I know some of you come in and out of that space. <laughs> some of you are here in body sometimes and not really in spirit or heart. And if you're one of those people, I would be asking myself, why is that? <laughs> Why don't I really engage with this group? And why am I here if I'm not really engaged with it? You know, what, what, Do I value it? If I value it, why aren't I engaged? And if I don't value it, why am I here? And also to reflect, am I using this group as a vehicle for my rebellion against divine truth rather than my engagement in it? Because I do feel that from some of you, especially at certain times. This feeling that... Yeah, I'll come, it's free, it's, it's pretty nice, but actually I want to be able to share this experience I had or this realisation I had or the fact that this makes me really cranky, you know, this thing. Yeah, so I suppose that's what I want to leave you with, a thank you and a challenge to reflect. <laughs> and also if you think about all of the different issues that I've raised, and I think I will put this outline on the internet that probably has a little bit more detail than what I've covered. In, but I've covered all the major points. But if you look at it, a lot of the issues I've raised, your blocks around this issue are your blocks in your relationship with God. You know, this lack of, personal, lack of desire for personal truth, a, a feeling like I don't want to care for myself and I'm in financial lack all the time because of it. Well, God's saying, hey, <laughs> your spiritual health is at stake here as well and you're going to have to want to care for your spiritual health as well if you want to grow. And also these feelings of rebellion, these feelings of, ah, oh, if it's free, it's not that important. God's the biggest gift giver I know, <laughs> you know, and he's waiting patiently. He's never going to use a device to manipulate your will. He wants you to foster your desire from a pure space inside of you. And that's how you gain that relationship. So if I can, if I can leave you guys with that and uh, thank you to those of you who've really participated in this experience with me. And um, I hope those of you who want to stay engaged, stay engaged with Fred and the book because, yeah, I think it's a masterpiece. And I know that he's very happy to have um, those of you who are really engaged, engaged with it. But before I finish, I was going to invite Lena and Igor up here to talk a bit about their personal situation. Now, guys, do you want me to interview you about this or what do you, what do you want to... Uh... <laughs> Igor's got a few things to say, I think. Thank you, Yvonne. Do you... 
So this is a big deal. This is first time outside, like from the other side of the camera. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, Here you stand together. For those who don't know us on uh, that watching on YouTube, we are. My name is Igor. Lena. This is my wife, Lena. Yeah. We are the guys that are doing uh, the whole uh, production side of things. Um, yeah, it's not... What a journey. What a journey, <laughs> yeah. So we just wanted to briefly just um, tell, tell you guys where we are, what's our situation, and um, how we go on from now. Yeah, I, and I, I and myself invited these guys to talk to you guys, and some of you know Lena and Eagle, but there's a lot of people watching. And perhaps I needed to address the people watching a little bit more during this discussion as well, because I feel everything we've talked about relates to them also. Um, but I've asked these guys to talk a little bit about their personal situation so that people on the other side of the world, of the camera, get to, to meet them and know what they do and yeah, how, how you do what you do. Yeah, so basically when, when you ask us how many hours it takes us... Um, I can ask you the same question. How many hours does it take you <laughs> to, to deal with divine truth? So, so many. There's like no the, set number. There's no there? set number. Yeah. It's a so lifestyle. It's yeah. a lifestyle, exactly. Yeah. So um, not that we're complaining. <laughs> we love it. And uh, my, my personal sort of... Um, uh, uh, what's to say? Your philosophy? My philosophy was, yeah, I was just, when I got in contact with Divine Truth, I thought, that's it, the world has to know it, I'm going to do everything in my power, as long, as long as I'm able to, as long as the situation allows us to do it, to get it out there, with or without AJ, it <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> but um, And that's really interesting, isn't it, Igor? You yeah. know, there's something that I see happening a lot, is people are wait taking their cues from AJ. Like, what's he doing where he's, oh, well, he's doing it, you know. Igor and Lena are people who haven't said that. They've said, right, well, what's there? We want to get it out there. It was Igor's idea to first put the first tape on YouTube. We were just making DVDs. He went, no, 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 I've got an account. I'm putting it up there. We said, okay, you do what you like, you know. So he's someone who has said, I'm not waiting for Daddy to lead the way. <laughs> yeah, one one thing that strikes me, like, I, I feel God's given us an opportunity at this time in the world where, where we all crave it uh, for divine truth through you guys. It's all here, and um, I just felt, you know, people have to know. And as long as uh, I had the situation available to me to do it, because I had the skill and and the knowledge. Um, so we started doing it. It's not easy to stand here. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> so do you, uh, what was your situation when you started to do this? How, how did you support yourself? Well, we moved f from Melbourne here and uh, we actually were living in the tent at the time. <laughs> so uh, I started in, uh, AJ had a, uh, had a little a camper caravan, van, caravan yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I approached him, he goes, yeah, you can do it here because I was living in a tent, there's no power and everything. So, Not that I um, f forced myself, but um, it was, the situation was that we were trying to live closer to nature. And, um, it was an experiment. Experiment, yes. <laughs> And that was you started editing old videos, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. and I approached him. He said, "Yeah, you can use the camper van." And so I was started in the camper van with five fans around me because <laughs> it's a metal it's thing like in the forty degrees yeah. heat. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a rough start, but didn't stop me there. And yeah, it just took off from from that point on. And um, and also, you never had the feeling, either of you, that we needed to do a lot of extra work to help you learn. Or You said, j first thing you said was, I want to help, how can I do it? And AJ said, well, here's some sound files that need, you know, fixing up because they're staticky. Eagle took them off, fixed them, brought them back. And so, AJ went, oh, okay, you want to do more? Here's some video files. Eagle did it. 
brought it back. Because um, I see how much uh, time it takes him to do everything, and I thought, wow, this guy needs some help, you know, <laughs> so with, with this thing. <laughs> it, and to put in context, AJ knows everything about our setup. He doesn't come anymore, but he used to oversee every setup, every pack up. He's personally hand purchased and picked every piece of equipment that we use, bar this beautiful whiteboard, which was a donation from Yvonne. <laughs> but pretty much everything else, we have had a personal hand in, in choosing and selecting. So he knows, uh, he's not just the man who shows up and gives the, the talk, he knows everything from the ground up of what's involved in providing this service. And obviously, Igor, you recognise that, yeah. yeah. The idea was to help you guys to free up some time and improve it rather than take more time. Yeah, which is a beautiful... Yeah, and I never thought that I would actually get the donation or anything from it, but um, if it wasn't for generosity of a few people, we, I wouldn't be able to support this thing. So there will be, there'll be hardly any YouTube, let's just say. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think it was one of the... During this journey, it was one of the biggest blocks to realise that we are running out of lack of self-love and p trying too hard and, and it was very difficult to maintain. And Yeah, when, you do, when you're working with Divine Truth and you hear it... It so, haunts you. You hear it, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, you, you hear it so much, it grows on you and you got to look at it. We have to look at our you know, self-worth, how we're treating others, uh, how we treat ourselves compared to others. Because you actually ended up in a situation, haven't you, where you're really working full-time on Divine Truth and it, as you said, if it wasn't for just a few people donating, is, is that right, large yes. amounts, then you would just... We, we, we'll, we wouldn't yeah. be able to live here, mm. basically. Yeah. Because we don't own any property, we have to pay for everything, for rent and cars and the whole lot. So, um, in Australia, it's a pretty expensive country to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, win, you know, to live in. Yeah. But, uh, you know... So I've, I've, I just ran with the idea as long as the uh, situation is there for me to do it, I'll do it. But, uh, you know, recently it came to the point that we have to look at the, our self-love uh, uh, self issues, how we're treating ourselves. Uh, and if it's becoming too hard to produce these things, so we got to ask the question, you know. Do we, should we respond to people's desire? So you're saying when you're not... You've actually used all of your personal savings, haven't you, to... Yeah, Lina's super nation. <laughs> <laughs> to actually get this far. And and so you're saying when you're looking at people's desire, you mean you're creating yeah, I something. A, yeah, yeah, I had a... I was a professional plasterer. I had a business. Lina was working in a promotional company, so we were driving good cars, you know, <laughs> living... A, Paying twice as much rent as we're paying now, but uh, we we sold that off. Of not that we um, miss it, I just felt so strongly to be here and uh, help because I know I can create create these things again. I've got arms and legs, you know. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think that's how all four of us feel, isn't it? Yeah. We're not afraid of hard work. AJ's at home digging holes to uh, plant trees right now and all four of us feel capable to re-enter the workforce if we need to. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Yeah. yeah. I just think it is a beautiful journey and it has been a really awesome opportunity and we've been very resistive to see things and admit to things and even speaking about this is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the dealing with luck is actually let the world know where we're at, so if anything happens or stops, so they know why why yeah, yeah. why and yeah. what what happened before that and how did it all come to it and it feels to me like if you ask me aj and mary don't they don't need this truth they know it all it's the world that needs it you know and we should be like the people that are touched by truth should be like in one team you know <laughs> that's how things will grow if you ask me otherwise if we just sit sit back and let you guys push the whole load, it's going to take another 2,000 years maybe. <laughs> so, um, the guys that are watching all, all over the world, and uh, these guys know the situation, but the guys that are watching YouTube uh, probably don't know, they probably think we 
all uh, swimming in, in butter here. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we l we let everyone know where we're at, and we I guess in the future we just respond to people's desire and um, uh, desire and what the, their response or the how appreciation. Much, how much yeah. they to people want. Yeah, to desire and appreciation of us. Yeah, and that's. It's just doing it by God's laws. Exactly. Otherwise, we will be pushing the information onto people that don't really want it, you know? So. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Nina? Hang on. Uh, can I still ask what you're going to say? <laughs> Is it appropriate while you're on video to let people know if they have a desire to contribute, how they could do so? Yes, okay. we are listed on um, uh, divinetruth.com uh, site. So under donations to others, you'll find our faces. Faces, <laughs> yeah. Uh. So uh, yeah, and uh, like I just said, one you know, if people we're talking about, uh, you know, co coffee money here to just let us keep things doing, uh, yeah, you know, keep going as well. It, so. Perhaps I should quote the the statistic that AJ quoted. Um, when we talked about it briefly before. And that was that there's, I think there's about 700 people who subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if, if each of them donated as little as $10 a month, and that's not a prescriptive number there, I'm just using a figure, that would equal quite a lot in a month. In fact, it would equal far more <laughs> than the donations that are currently being received. And it would certainly support... Um, both Lena and Igor and myself and AJ, to, con to continue to do what we love to do. Um, but I just, f I feel that it's a lot of these issues that we've talked about. When something's just there easily, we, we don't re we're not really valuing what, what's gone into it. And perhaps I'd like to ask you guys just to talk about exactly what you do do. I touched on what you do for one book group, but what would a week look like for you? Well, that's the thing. We live around uh, divine office. truth. <laughs> yeah, we live around uh, producing divine truth. We sort of made it our priority, and uh, anybody that involved in editing, they know it's like a lifestyle. It's not like something you do in the office. You sit there and do your six hours, and you go go off and do something else. It's more, you know, interactive thing. You might do it. It's like a painting, I guess, a picture, you know? When you have an inspiration, you go, you can do it in, in the middle of the night if you want to, you know? So some projects can take very quick amount of time, some projects can take a lot amount of time. So you can't put a certain hour on a project. But uh, it's not just the editing, we're involved in the whole recording process and, um, you Traveling know. Traveling around. You know, getting there, you know, getting the equipment ready, charging the equipment, and yeah, it, it, yeah. If I go to details, it'll be you know another another. I hour, think we so. should go into some details. If we look in the last month, what you guys have done, so you've spent a lot of home time that you're saying where you're editing or setting off a process, and then you go and do something else, yeah. and you come back, you edit some more. But what other things have you physically done with myself and AJ in the last month? So we went to. Um, Kayabra. So we spent uh, a week locked up. <laughs> no, it was it was a big project that we wanted to achieve in a very short period of time. So we've contributed a um, number of days continuously, just editing, editing, and pulling pulling the information together, sounds and pictures and images, and it was all for the uh, summer fest that's coming up. So it was quite quite intense. So we needed a couple of days break after we got back home. <laughs> And um, yeah. And what other things you've come to our home a number of times, haven't you? And oh, we've yeah. started, we've done interviews and frequently asked question interviews. So there's a lot of projects that are yet to come out that you will see. But uh, yeah, it's all it's a everyday stuff. So yeah. for us, you're involved in the setup, the pack up, the packing of the van, the unpacking of the van, the filming, the managing the other people who might like now on camera <laughs> and training them. Um, managing the data, charging the batteries. Um, yeah, what else do you do? You yeah. wait for us while we're getting ready. We, you 
very patient. If you happen to appear at our home and we're having a deep discussion with someone, you just hang there and wait yeah. till we're finished. Yeah. It's a lifestyle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm quite grateful. I wanted to, um, I guess, express my gratitude and being able to share. Um, and um, I guess opportunity is allowing us, and we've made that choice uh, when we moved from Melbourne, that we wanted to give what we can at the moment, and it's been pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, as as Mary is saying, the journey is confrontation and a lot of self-reflection, and that's been intense in the last two years, but it's been very beautiful, and um, it's pretty awesome standing here and talking about it. It's it's a big step. It's harder than I thought, actually. <laughs> yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> you guys should try something. <laughs> it's pretty different when you're one or two people here and there's all those people yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Elaine. <laughs> Thank you. There has been discussion and feedback to myself about, well, you have a block about receiving... And I have experienced that with Lena. Um, I don't do internet banking, so the $10 a month thing for me doesn't work. Can However, I reiterate that that was not a prescriptive number or a suggestion to anyone? Oh, yeah, no, no, no. It was no, just. But, yeah. However, what my point is that there are still other ways to contribute. And yes, I have experienced that, but that also ignited something in myself at the time. And. What I feel that we too can have a block if we don't just um, have the spirit of appreciation anyway. Yeah, and uh, like I want to pull you we up can on step that point. That. What does love do? Love goes, uh, does love go, oh, you've got a block to receiving, so I'm not giving yeah. to you? Yeah. Does love ever do that? No. That's no. exactly what I'm trying love to say. Love has compassion yeah. to, towards people, love values gifts and sees gifts for what they are. And, and also tries to assist the person through their issue, through generosity, not through lack. So, um, yeah, I feel we need to be very careful about that kind of talk. Obviously, I have been looking at myself around this issue of, okay, I'm doing something where I, I'm not able to sustain it on the donations that have come in. And so, I, obviously, there's feelings in me that are creating this. Part of them is not wanting to stand up here and just be really frank with you about money, which is why I've done this. But also why I'm withdrawing from doing book group because I realise I have to act ethically in this situation and I have to deal with the emotions that are there for me. But I don't think that invalidates what we've been talking about today. Exactly. Yeah. So it's an emotion within us if we don't show that appreciation and give anyway. Yeah, when we don't value the gifts we receive, it's definitely something inside of us, yeah. <clears throat> but it also puts a lot of pre pressure on people that do appreciate the truth, you know, yeah. and do give. And, um, you know, they feel like they have to cover up for the people that don't give. And it's not fair to them as well. So we have to address worldwide uh, this question, you know, if... The certain individuals uh, can give, that's great, but it's a, it's a big strain on them, you know? And if, if everybody just, uh, you know, get, get into it a little, as I said, AJ and Mary don't need it. We all need it, you know, this truth. So I, it needs to be said. Yeah, it's a good point, Igor. And that's why I wanted to stress, you know, the gratitude that we have for those who do give to us. And obviously last week there were 17 people who gave quite a bit of money. <laughs> uh, because 30 whatever other people didn't. So we don't actually want to put more pressure on those people um, because we feel your generosity is speaking to us loud and clear. And actually, as I said earlier, you've helped so many other people to receive divine truth. But I feel, and this is why I've tried to talk to some of the deeper issues today, there are reasons why we don't value what we receive and we've also got a lot of junk about money. <laughs> um, and so that's why when we say, well, I'm just someone who can't give, if that was me, I, if, if I was coming to something that I really valued every week and that I wanted to see continue, I would be looking at what is this worth to me and if I can't give that, why not, my goodness? 
like what's happening in my life with the truths that I already know about God and the law of attraction and everything, what's happening for me? So that's certainly what I'm thinking about, what's happening for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But also inviting you guys to think about it also. Yeah. I think yeah. enough said. Thank you guys for <laughs> listening. Thanks. Thank you too. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. And um, I won't see you next week, but uh, I hope you keep enjoying the book and um, who knows what will happen in our future, hey? <laughs>